October 21st. In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act of New Jersey, adequate notice of this meeting was provided on January 9th, 2019, by sending written notice and electronic notice to the Courier News and the Star Ledger, posting on the website and the bulletin board in the municipal building, and filing with the township clerk. May we have the roll call, please?
just one more reminder that the Center of Excellence Development returns to the Planning Board at 7 p.m. on October 28th at the assistance of Mayor Hayes. The Planning Board has uh, been publicized uh, as an additional notice uh, for the meeting the next day on Tuesday the 29th in the entire history of Bridgewater Planning Board. We have never held back the back planning meetings, but I guess we will this time. Uh, there are no presentations and no discussions. Uh, oh, before I, I, I open it up to the public, I have to make a public announcement. The only reason that Tasha is here is to publicly recognize that the best practices have been circulated to the council, and they have been circulated and received, and are in the process of providing questions. Do I need to say anything else so you can go home? Okay, Natasha, you can go home now. <laughs> Ms. Daniel, sir, just two quick items. Uh, one, uh, I know that the council is reviewing the PD report, uh, and we look forward to working with you on any comments or questions you may have. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't ask you for a report. I beg your pardon. No, I'm just going to give it. Thank you. Uh, the second thing is we held the uh, flu clinics, uh, two flu clinics, <laughs> one uh, for all township employees where we uh, gave uh, the vaccine for 47 employees. That's a, a record high for us this year. Uh, and then today we held a, a second flu clinic at the Senior Center, uh, where we uh, gave vaccine to over 50 seniors, and then we have another one on October the 24th. So very important that everyone, uh, especially those who are vulnerable, get their vaccine, the flu vaccine this year. And I know the county is offering free drive-by clinics as well. So if you haven't gotten flu vaccine, uh, I have, so I shake your hand, number one. Uh, and number two, you should get yours. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, meeting open to the public. Meeting uh, members of the public wishing to address the council on any matter will be allowed two minutes to speak unless there are unusual circumstances. May I have a motion to open the public, please? So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Please come forward, give your name and address, and address the council. Good evening, Jeffrey Brookner, 16 Nicole Terrace. I just want to uh, briefly raise three topics and really questions for the council. The first is at the last meeting, if you recall, there were several people who raised public comment, including me, about the desire for more openness on the um, part of the council. And it seemed like a couple councilmen, especially Mr. mentioned to Drugs, who unfortunately aren't here this evening, um, they seemed to be at war with each other on who could be more in support of openness and the need to have documents more readily available and have the meetings video recorded and live streamed. And I know for this meeting, at least, there's been no improvement. There are five resolutions on the agenda. None of them are available in the lobby. None of them were on the internet in advance of the meeting. These are things that have become almost routine for every government agency I've come across at the state, county, and local level, except this board. And it seems to me as aggressively favorable, Mr. Mench and Mr. Pedrosa were at the last meeting, that this would have been fixed. It's not something that requires study and attention. It's just something you drag and drop into the right folder on the internet. Second of all, I am appreciative that Mr. Naples mentioned that the police study has come to the council. I heard um, from the mayor and a couple of other sources that it's been at the council for a long time, and I'm disappointed to hear that it's not further along, but it is what it is. I'd like to see quick attention to that because obviously that's an important issue to get right. Third of all, following up on the status, I know that when I was on the board of ed, there was an issue with the school resource officer funding. It first came up, I believe it was in the spring, it might have been early summer, which was that the board of ed was questioning the amount that the council was charging for the one school resource officer that the Board of Ed reimbursed the council for. And there were some negotiations that obviously, as a member of the board, I was privy to at the time, but couldn't, couldn't share publicly at this time or at that time. But I do know that the report, or the recommendations were reached and submitted to the council a long time ago, or at least to the council president a long time ago. And I'm following up on the status of that because the mayor has indicated that if a decision is not reached soon, he is considering, you know, he can continue paying for the officer if the Board of Ed isn't reimbursing him indefinitely. And I say him, obviously reimbursing the 
township until the settlement is reached. And I'm sure none of us, whether it's the council members or the public, want to see the back officer pulled out of the schools. But at some point, if the council doesn't finally act on what's been submitted and proposed, and maybe there need to be further negotiations, I'm not suggesting that it needs a rubber stamp, but there's no reason for this to be delayed as long as it's been delayed. So those, I'd like to get a, an update on those three things, the transparency, the police study, and the school resource officer. Thank you. Your question is Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the council? Please come forward. Name and address. Jets are 
it's like a bomb is incoming. And it's, it can happen every five minutes for a, a half an hour, 45 minutes at a time. And that might be three or to seven in the, in the evening. And it's unbelievably noisy if you're a family sitting in the backyard eating dinner, like at your barbecue. And I know it's coming into the colder months, but this is why I'm here tonight, is I've been complaining to my family so long about it, and they're like, why are you complaining to us? You know, you should talk to somebody who knows about this. Um, also, too, you know, the regulations that we have in Bridgewater for residential noise, what's permitted, is between 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. And these planes are actively, or these jets are actively moving so close to the ground, right over like the country club area or the high school area to maybe meadow that's kind of stretching it but but it's really loud in that area and it's 11 o'clock at night it's 11 30 it's 4 a.m and i only know this because my work hours are kind of unusual and i've turned off my air conditioning now and i can hear it with the with the air conditioning off completely um, it's, it's really too loud to be permissible and i don't know at what point um, Bridgewater permitted people, airlines, commercial, private. I don't know, it goes so close. Uh, I think you're referring to Somerset Airport, which is in Bedminster on Airport Road. That, that facility, for better or for worse, has been there since, I guess, 1945. There are no jets. The, there are the, my understanding is that the medevac helicopters have jets support, uh, but there are no large simulation plane that makes a heck of a din. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the township has no ability to regulate the air traffic in and out of that airport. Uh, at least I don't, I do not think we bought it. We bought it with the airport. That's the matter of fact. You know, we lost that. Yeah, I mean, that, that medevac has been there for a, a long time, right? Well, it's been there a number of years. Uh, but that that's where your 4 a.m. traffic is. I, I can't agree or disagree because I, I, I don't hear the medevac with it. It's, it's always a single jet, and it's always one of those very small, ultra-light ones. And I know we're like... We're into it, but uh, I, I, I'm fairly confident the runway is far too short for any sort of uh, jet plane, but the helicopters, uh, and, and especially with Trump in town, uh, no, I know. It's, it's, not the, area it's not the president uh, or, or the medevac. I mean, this is clearly like, I can see the wheels. Like, it is so, they are so close. And it's not just one, it's many. Because it's one, and then it's another, <coughs> and then five minutes later, it's another. And there's a way to report, like, excessive air traffic um, online. And I've done that. Um, what you say to the FAA or They report to the FAA. Uh, website. Um, but but even my neighbor. We have had complaints a couple of years since the helicopters. And 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 honest to God, I know they come out. They do their their you know tour of duty uh, route just to make sure everything's working. I I not only know the difference between a helicopter and something else. Like I can see them, and you know it's not always coming over from like the the east side of 22 to the west side of 22, whatever whatever direction that is. I mean, sometimes it's almost diagonal. So I don't think it's really the, the, what the thing that I'm noticing is one airport. I, I think it's probably more than one. It's always in like the same direction. It's never that way. It's never from like Van Fulton to Bradley Gardens. Um, but it's unbelievably noisy. And I just wonder if, if you're aware or if you're in charge of changing flight patterns, when did this happen? Um, Well, thank you. I appreciate well, you listening. Okay. And, and again, thank you for, for hearing my. Anyone else wishing to address? Uh, oh, we have someone. Okay. Come on, Mrs. Franco. You still have to give your name and address. Oh, you all have it. Hi, Kathy Franco, 766 Remap Road. Um, first, I'd like to thank the council for posting the agenda. Um, 
on October 17th, which was well in advance of this meeting and for not making any changes to it. Secondly, I'd like to thank the council for making me a more educated voter and citizen in the past nine months, um, because I have really become much more involved in what's taking place in our township. Um, as far as police staffing, um, I hope that we continue to look at what the needs are because it originally came up in October of 2018. So it's been a year since it originally was brought to this council's attention. I think it was October 15th, 2018. And yet we haven't done any, we have not moved forward with that. Uh, I noticed that both last agenda and this agenda, we have revenue items which are being voted on um, as far as adding items to the agenda uh, for revenue. And I don't know where those expenses relate to those or if those expenses are going to be things that are already in the current budget or if they're going to be things that later get voted on by this council. Um, I really don't understand how that all meshes and I don't know if the council can answer that tonight or if it's something that they need to look at in the future. My third, or, and I think my final issue, well, actually I have one thing. Um, Mr. Nogales, you said that the Center of Excellence is going to turn on the 28th and 29th, and you said that Mayor Hayes asked for that. Yeah. Actually, I was at that planning board meeting, and I believe it was Scarlett Doyle, the planning board, um, or the, the township planner, who the 28th was the next available meeting, and she did identify the 29th as also but being available. The 28th or the 29th could have been used. Right. And it was Mayor Hayes said he wanted to have the 29th added as an additional meeting. Okay, I, I did record that, so I did not hear Mayor Hayes state that. Um, I did hear that um, Scarlett Doyle did identify both of those dates as being available. Either of those two dates. Okay. Um, but, you know, it has been advertised um, throughout the township as far as those dates are both available. So I'm hoping that they will continue to be available for township residents to be available to make their comments known as well as for individuals to provide testimony on those dates. My final question, and it has to do with the Center of Excellence, and I'm very sorry that neither Councilman Perdoso nor Councilman Mensch are here, because my, my question is kind of, if the Center of Excellence had not gone through redevelopment, there are 61 acres that are undeveloped at this point. So if I look at the FAR, according to the Township Ordinances, which allows for 0.4, a, you know, per acre um, floor area ratio to be developed. So if you take 61 acres, that's 2,657,160 square feet. If you then take 0.6, 0.4 FAR, that's 1,062,864 square feet of office building that could be developed. If you divide that by 300 square feet per person, as far as how many people could occupy that many square feet of office space, that would mean that there could be a potential 3,542 employees additional added to this township without having to go through any variances, without having to go through any redevelopment, without having to add anything to our uh, road system without having to add additional lanes to 202, 206 or, um, or lights. That's my understanding. So I've looked this up in the ordinance and perhaps I'm misunderstanding and perhaps this is considered testimony and not questions. Um, but, um, Oh, okay, so yeah, okay, so it's not necessarily employees, but it's one parking space for every 300 yeah. square feet when of. It, when it has our, when, when the facility is used for research and development. Well, well no, that's for. The lab would be 300 square feet. 
right. Well, well, because our township, I believe, uses R and D and office space equally, and that's where the question came up at the planning board was: should there be a reduction from the three hundred? Um, so my other question is, uh, or my other comment is, I. These are really questions for the planning board. Uh, the planning board is the judicial body that's hearing that right now, not the council. Well, what they what they want to do with it, it will come back to the council for a redeveloper for an agreement, a developer's agreement, and that's when the council. But at this point, all those questions are, are good questions, but they really need to be raised at the planning board. And, and they will be raised there. I'm sure they will. As well as they will come back to you before you hear it again. Um, my other question is, or my other statement is that at one of the town council meetings, I remember Mr. Mensch saying that he had not heard anybody come out against or in favor of the Center of Excellence at a town council meeting. I listened to the town council meetings from 2016. There were six people came out and spoke on behalf. Yes, there were individuals who came out in favor of the Center of Excellence. And let me say this, I am also an individual who is in favor of this town council considering it as long as it does not have a negative impact upon the overall development of this city. Um, as a resident of Bridgewater and a resident of Martinsville, one of the things I loved about Martinsville was we had what I considered to be a little downtown. It is the only downtown in Bridgewater Township, but yet it has never been allowed to be a downtown. Bridgewater does not have a downtown. It does not have an area that we can walk around. It does not have an area that offers retail, dining, all in a place that you can park your car and walk around. Instead, we go to Somerville. We hang out at Ferbs. We go to their street fairs. We go to Basking Ridge and Burnsville. Really need to bring this to the I, I understand that, Mr. Nagalis, but I believe that because redevelopment starts at the town council, it's assigned to the planning board, and then comes back to town council, I believe it's important to share it with the town council as well. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you listening to me. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Uh, hi, Sarah Kosk, for New Jersey. Um, Could you pull the mic? Sorry. Um, I just wanted to know um, a quick update. I don't know, you mentioned about the library grant, so I wanted to know if the council was going to take the opportunity that was being offered to them. Um, it was what I understood was a 50 50. They were going to give them a 50 grant, and what the township was going to pay the other 50% to replace that, to have that system um, on, at the library. So I wanted to know, and I know there was, it was somewhat time sensitive with the grant, so I wanted to know whether or not uh, the council had made a decision whether or not they were going to go forward with that grant. Uh, yes, we are. Uh, we, we are paying for a study that's being done right now. There's a, a, a Structural architect that was doing that study as part of the grant requirement. Right. Uh, so we did that. Uh, that's underway right now. And then the the grant itself, I, I don't think it starts until January first. Won't well, open until January first. And so when does the council vote to go forward? With once the once we uh, decide whether we we decide to go forward, uh, but then we have to see what the terms are when they open grant. And what about uh, Mr. Mitch's uh, question that he had about the bonding? about whether or not they had to bond it or if they could We won't know that until they open the grant up for Okay. All right. Thank you. Welcome. Anyone else wishing to address the council? Seeing no motion from the public, motion to close public input. I'll make that motion. All those in favor? All right. We are opposed to public. Uh, there are no uh, public hearing and final ordinances. No introduction of new ordinances. Moving to resolution 12A. Providing for the insertion of a special item of revenue in the 2019 
uh, budget pursuant to NJSA 48 colon 4 dash uh, 87 chapter 159 PL 1948 radon $2,000. Uh, this grant, by the way, comes from the Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, I believe Mr. Naples last year was used to obtain. Why don't I let you? Yeah, thank you. Uh, we use the money uh, we get from this grant to buy the radon testing kits. Uh, we offer that to the residents free using this money so they come get the kit, get the kit uh, test their own basements, come back to us, uh, we get the samples and give them a the reading with the course. Radar, by the radon is a uh, carcinogen as such, and, and it's good for people to be aware if they have any kind uh, Any questions from the council? I'll second it. A roll call, please, on 12A. Captain Trudor? Yes. Captain Perot? Yes. Lieutenant Abbott? Yes. All right, moving to 12B, providing for the insertion of a special item of revenue in the 2019 budget pursuant to NJSA 48 colon 4 87 chapter 159 PL 1948, Heroes and Helpers grant $2,000, and this is coming courtesy of the Target Corporation. Yes, uh, thank you. The, uh, we use this fund to purchase Target gift cards, which are then given by the PBA members to local families in need. They go, they take the families to Target with the gift cards uh, and do it for holiday shopping. So it's, it's paid by paid by Target, but our PBA helps out all the local families. Any questions? I'll second it. Roll call, 12B. Special item of revenue in the 2019 budget pursuant to NJSA 48 colon 4 87, chapter 159, PL 48. Services Commission, Newcomers Club, $5,000. This grant comes from the Somerset County Freeholders. Mr. Nichols. Yes, we use this money uh, from the Freeholders through the Recreation Department to set up a newcomers chapter in the high school. It's for new high school students to the uh, area. Uh, they come in, they they get a uh, age appropriate mentor, there's a, a teacher or guidance counselor who also helps as well. Uh, I think last year they served uh, over 90 students. So it's been going on for a number of years. Very successful. And this is a competitive grant, isn't it? This is a competitive yes. grant? Yes. We have to compete for this one. And we win? Yes, we do. Okay. Well, I'll make the motion when you do it. Second. Roll call, please. 12C. Well, Captain Miguel? Yes. Moving to 12B, authorized for release of the performance guarantee acceptance of the site improvement. Now that performance guarantee was $203,985.60. That was the guarantee. Uh, it was for site improvements and acceptance of a maintenance grant of $30,000, uh, $957.84. From Mercal LLC, uh, 290 and 294 Garrison Road, Block 408, Lots 2.04 and 2.05. Mr. Naples, any comments from your side? None. Okay. I'll move it. Second? I'll second it. Roll call, 12D. Yes. 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 Uh, 12D, reimbursement of the fire permit fee in the amount of $60 for Spring Run Corporation located at 1722 West Circle Drive, Martinsville, New Jersey, 08836 for the annual Halloween campfire on Saturday, October 19th, with a rain date of Friday, October 18th. Uh, anyway, uh, Mr. Naples, any, uh, this is a good cause. No right. Do no I have a motion on 12 Yes. Roll call, 12 please. Yes. 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 Now we'll, we'll be hosting a uh, closed session. Let me leave the monitor. Thank you. Uh, be it resolved by the Bridgewater Town Council that this body will now hold a closed session to discuss litigation and contract negotiation. When and if the matter is discussed become public record, this will be made known to the public at that time. The public is excluded from said meeting and further notice thereof is dispensed uh, with all in accordance with Section 8 and 4A of the Open Public Meetings Act. 
Could I have a motion to go to closed session? By the way, after the closed session, there will be no additional but, uh, business transactions by this board.